up, Jacob? How you doing, man? I am doing well. How are you? Doing great. Well, thank you very much for uh, taking the time with me today. And, um, you know, I just I wanted to bring the people who are watching here up to speed a little bit. So um, my name's Eric. I'm the host of the uh, YouTube channel, Outer Limitless, uh, social media and a YouTube channel. And, you know, Jacob, we got you here, man. Uh, what are you up to? Well, uh, I do YouTube, the Preppers Bunker Outdoors, uh, and uh, I do it on Instagram as well, um, the Preppers Bunker Outdoors. Um, I have a Facebook page, um, Jacob Beach Peterson. That is my full name. So uh, that's how I kind of keep things updated and keep people uh, in the loop on what I'm doing. Oh, awesome. Great, man. Well, again, thank you very much. And um, we, we got a little video for our uh, viewers and subscribers today. You want to get into it? Yeah, man, I'm excited. Let's do it. Sounds good. Um, for everybody watching, this is kind of the start of a new little project for us. Um, so I guess there's some introductions to be uh, made here for everybody um, you know, who is a subscriber on my channel. Um, you know, uh, Jacob, welcome. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, my viewers are going to see uh, your channel and, you know, get some exposure to you and who you are and what you do. And, um, you know, maybe jump aboard on your channel and, um, you know, same same with all your subscribers. I'm hoping maybe they'll, uh, you know, see a little bit in what I do and come along for the ride as well. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the goal. I like working with uh, other people such as yourself. And sadly, I don't get enough opportunities to do it. So I'm I'm stoked on it. Nice. No, I'm pretty pumped, man. Um, so, you know, I, I've come up with a few things to talk about. I kind of like generally, um, you know, an organic sort of discussion, but I did, you know, come up with some topics for today. So, um, you know, for the people that are watching, uh, this is really the first video moving forward. Uh, we've come up with a few different uh, conceptual ideas that we're going to move forward with. But today is really just sort of a, a basic sort of get to know each other a little bit, um, get our, you know, subscriber base and viewers to sort of, you know, get a little bit into the mix and to, you know, what we like, what we're into, what our videos are about, our style, um, you know, maybe our preferences and maybe a couple funny things I got to kind of put in here at the end. So um, let's let's roll. So ready to get into yeah. it? Absolutely. Nice. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm reasonably new to your channel um full disclosure um i've been watching you now for i'd say probably about eight months off and on um so for me to really uh you know get to know you a little bit more i've looked back at some of your videos from the past so and and correct me if i'm wrong so you know you're a husband uh you're a father you're a business owner you're a dog owner and you're a youtube host now you know these things, there's a lot that go hand in hand, but there's also a lot of things that are in conflict and it's difficult and, you know, balancing your life and keeping your full time job and bringing the income into the family, but also finding this time for your craft and your passion and to follow along with your hobbies. It's it's pretty tough. And if you're anything like me, I know that's something that you struggle with, but, you know, you you make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um there are people out there that have figured out how to just make money on YouTube and just make money doing what they love. I don't know how they do it. They're the top 1%, but uh, for, for the rest of us, um, it's a, it's a hard balancing act. That's for sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, what made you start this channel in the first place? Well, uh, I think at one point in my military career, I looked at going up to Alaska to a unit that uh, primarily just reviews gear. And I thought, that's a freaking job I would love because I always had an opinion about all the gear we used. Right. And so uh, a few things, uh, a few things happened. Um, and I started getting into survival stuff, uh, especially actually with the history channels alone. And so I decided I kept putting off making a YouTube channel. I decided that I was just going to take my cell phone out and start filming. And uh, I actually got really motivated for my um, my video that I gave to a loan uh, to apply to be on the show, which I ended up doing their boot camp and stuff like that for season two. And that's why I have a pretty strong tie to most of the 
people from alone. But uh, it just kind of went from there. I thought it would be mostly military tactics and firearms, and it ended up being mostly uh, survival and knives. It just kind of evolved, and um, the things that I am passionate about ended up being on film. That was that. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, for me, um, you know, I was really looking for excuses to get in the outdoors. Um, I grew up uh, as a young kid uh, hiking in the Colorado Rockies. Um, I, I loved it, uh, but, you know, I just haven't had great opportunities to get back out there. And especially now that I'm in, you know, adulthood and again, you know, a, a father and a homeowner and a husband and, you know, full time at work. Um, I really had to find ways to force myself into the outdoors. So, you know, I, I started getting into this and I knew that you know, I, I really was passionate about uh, photography, but when I started getting out into the mountains, I said, well, videography can tell a different story. So, um, you know, the reviews for me is just one part of my channel. You know, yes, I'm a reviewer, but I also like to say I'm a content creator. I like to create content and have ideas. And, and in some regards, that's what this is, you know. I, I don't always want to do reviews. I want to have the opportunity to have some of these conversations and meet great people and get into the industry. And that's what it's become for me. But initially it was an excuse to get into the mountains, um, get out into the outdoors, enjoy my hobby again, and sort of relive it through a, a different lens, so to speak. Absolutely. I, to be honest with you, um, obviously I'd be considered probably a reviewer as well. And I wish I didn't do so many reviews i wish i did just more adventures but uh it just kind of happens you know especially if you're the type of person like me that um has experience with a lot of different gear has opinions knows what they like and don't like and and feels an obligation to share that with other people to try and help people it just you end up reviewing stuff so i think it's kind of a natural progression yeah i completely agree with you a thousand percent and like you said it's you know you want to do other things with it, but reviews are always solid and it's great to get your hands on gear and give good advice to people. Um, and with that comes obviously the back and forth that you have with your audience and all of the, the comments. And, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I see you're very active, um, not only on YouTube, but you're on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. The Preppers Bunker Outdoors. Actually, at one point I was running social media management for some other companies on Instagram. And I think I was running eight or nine Instagram pages. Wow. So uh, a little bit out of control with that. But, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it all uh, kind of comes together and links together. Um, YouTube and Instagram, especially. Uh, Instagram is a a visual platform and YouTube is as well. And a lot of your adult users use both. And I like taking pictures just as much, if not more as I like uh, taking videos. So again, just kind of a natural progression of how things ended up working. So with that, as a YouTube and gear reviewer, now I've looked at, you know, sort of some of the history of what you've done. And I think the reason why we're a good match is because we have a lot of common things, but we also have our separate focus. So for me personally, as a gear reviewer and somebody who enjoys the outdoors, you know, I cover a lot of knives. You cover a lot of knives. I mean, we naturally gravitate towards that. But when we start to differentiate, you know, you tend to cover a lot of uh, firearms. Um, you know, I don't cover any. However, I'd be willing to bet that you know, some of my subscriber base would love to see some great reviews of firearms. And so, you know, that's the type of thing I think I'm trying to get out of this project with you is to say, hey, you know, there are things that we naturally will agree and be able to discuss and things that quite honestly, you know, I don't naturally, not that I, I'm not opposed to firearms. I have no problem. In fact, I would love to get into firearms problem being is if it's any addiction like my knife addiction i'll spend way too much money and it'll completely consume me uh so i haven't got there yet but it's not to say i don't appreciate it and i think that by you know introducing my audience to somebody like you who's in a very similar um i would say similar place in your channel um that you know it provides our 
viewership and also ourselves some opportunity. So I wanted to talk a little bit about your your channel and my channel and where I think they actually kind of compare in some ways. Now, um, we're about the same age in channel years, right? Um, you might be a, a little bit older. From what I can tell, you started roughly in March 2015, something ballpark around that. Um, I started in February of 2016, so you got about a year on me. Um, and what I think is interesting is I know how diligent I have been to keep this channel moving. And I can tell by your statistics how diligent you have been. Um, for example, I have 562 videos. Now, I can tell you definitively, I have released no less than two videos per week, every single week, without fail, for every single week since I've started my channel back in February of 2016. Well, you have 626 videos. Proportionally, we're right in the same place. Add another some, year, right? So right. what I'm saying is I know by how hard I've worked, how hard you've worked to keep your channel moving. You have done no less than on average two videos per week, every single week for five years straight. I mean, shit, man, that is a freaking ton of work. Yeah, it's crazy when you when you look at it five years down the road, especially. Yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of film. <laughs> it is. It is a lot. A lot of gigabytes, man. Yeah. Um, and and, you know, in terms of subscriber base, um, you know, you you're larger in that capacity, about double me. So you have about 13,000 subs. Um, I have about 6,300. Um, and then in terms of views, um, we're actually fairly close. You got 2 million views. I got 1.7. Um, yep. So, you know, I, again, um, my whole reason for bringing that up is, you know, in terms of what we're trying to do and, and you know, getting our channels out there and bringing it to a larger uh, volume of subscribers. I think it makes sense to do these types of conversations and these projects. And, um, you know, I know we have some some pretty good things lined up moving forward. And, you know, I'm hoping this is just uh, video one of many. Um, so kicking this off right now, you're a YouTube channel host. You naturally gravitate towards reviews. Now you cover a lot of things, knives, axes, firearms, um, occasional backpacks, uh, occasional flashlights. You've done a lot on prepping and bug out and you do some occasional camping. Um, what would you say are really your favorite topics or favorite videos to produce? Yeah, that's yeah. a hard question. Um, really, I like making videos about knives and I say that with uh, it's it's a kind of an emotionally loaded question because um, I feel like I want to put out so much more than knife videos. I love just I love using knives. I, they're a huge part of of my adventures. Um, and I'd say adventuring is what I do more than anything. It's not bushcraft. It's not necessarily hiking. It's not necessarily camping. I like going out and having adventures and exploring. But uh, I, I mean, just the numbers speak for themselves and in, in the, uh, in the balance of what I've done. I like doing knife videos. I like playing with knives. And so, you know, it, I, I do it the most because it's what I enjoy, you know. Nice. No, I, I, I can't blame you. Um, I would definitely have to say, uh, my knife videos are, are up there. Um, I am, um, you know, typically a fixed blade guy, you know, and, and, uh, you know, the, the utility purpose that you get out of them and, and the enjoyment, um, you know, I'm a user, uh, you know, when it comes down to my collection, uh, you have people who have collections. Well, I have a user's collection. I don't care what the knife is in my collection. I intend on using it. So um, it's sure. going to have dings and scuffs and the, the more, I uh, loved patina on the thing. The, the more I enjoy it, because that just tells me that I'm out there using it, uh, learning a craft, gaining experience, learning about the steel and the performance and what you can do with these tools. And I think that that translates into what my favorite video topics are, which and, and I'm glad that you said adventure. I was going to say um, my hiking and camping and my mountain uh, time, but um, 
I think you're right. I think it is actually adventure. And there's a subtopic to why I enjoy those videos. And it's because for me, when I go on those adventures, I really spend a lot of time preparing for the adventure. Where I'm spending time in the mountains, I know that it's potentially dangerous, could be hazardous conditions. I'm miles and miles in the wilderness with nobody to help almost an impossible way to get out of there. So my preparation time is a big part of that adventure. And then it's the pinnacle, right? So now I'm out there and I'm filming me using this stuff or, or using a product as part of a review in that setting, but it's pulling it off and making the right kit and having all that preparation translate into a successful video that shows that all that work was worth it. I come home safe. And to me, it's that culmination of the entire process wrapped up in that adventure video that I think I yeah. enjoy the most. Yeah, that's awesome. I think my, I would say my favorite videos to film would be the adventure videos, like you're saying. What I hate, though, is, you know, when I get back from an adventure like that and I have like 12 or 14 hours of footage. And I'm just sitting there looking at it, and I know I have to edit it. And that really, I love the adventure, but I like kind of a balance between what I enjoy and what's easy to edit. So for YouTube, I love the adventure the most. But for YouTube, I don't enjoy making the adventure videos as much because I just hate the editing, man. I just hate the editing so much. Yeah, I'm not the most cinematic guy. I understand it, and I could completely film cinematic, but you know, my subscribers will tell you I'm not, and it's because of that exact reason. Like, I'm out there enjoying my time in that scenario. I, I can't be a film crew the whole time, and you know, I'm with my friends and my family, and they can only take so much of it, and they're very patient. I'm lucky that they're willing to deal with me, while they're trying to hike and enjoy the wilderness and I'm sitting here with a camera in their face. I mean, there's only so much that they'll put up with. So I'm not cinematic. I'm running gun. Um, I try to do a good job. I try to be clean. I try to have decent audio. Um, but to your point, you know, the adventure is the adventure. Um, YouTube's another thing. So I'm trying to find that happy medium between the two. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So... Nice. Well, okay. Um, if that's your favorite, then what's your least favorite video to, to produce? I'll tell you mine. I'll tell you mine yeah. first. Okay. So, obviously, the adventures are one thing, and that's the best. Now, the opposite is um, a review of something that sucks. I <sighs> hate it. And, you know, in full disclosure... You know, I do receive a lot of things and I have a lot of people asking to send me a lot of things. And um, I guess, you know, it, it's a double edged sword. First is I know that I don't have a large subscriber base. And I think part of it is because I'm very long winded and I get kind of deep on my reviews. Um, people who like entertainment want that five minute, you know, entertainment value. And I'm 13 to 20 minutes at minimum on a review. And I don't care if it's the most technical backpack that kicks ass, the best knife with the you know greatest steel and sheath system and edge retention, or if it's a crappy notebook that's supposed to work. These you know, and, and I'm using this one as an example. I got this really crappy digital notebook. I'm like, it's not even technically in my genre, but when I saw it, because I do cover EDC, I was like, you know what? If this thing works, and it's just like good addition to somebody's EDC kit, it's worth showing it on my channel. But then right. the thing didn't work, and I'm like committed to getting this thing done, and I'm just like, I have to film this crappy review of this product, and I know that on the back end, I'm basically lambasting a company. I don't like doing that, but I'm obligated to do my job and to do it accurately, show the pros, show the cons, and if the thing sucks gotta say it and I, and I just I hate those videos and I don't like doing them but I do them because I'm obligated see I'm see, I'm 
that's a double-edged sword for me because um, if I have a product that ends up not being so good, uh, it sucks putting the time and effort into the video to make it unless there is a lot of false advertising behind the product and a lot of people have been misled to love it, then, then I, then I'm, I'm like, I'm all in Let's, my right. best quality videos. Uh, the videos that I'm best known for is on, uh, ultimate survival tips, MSK one. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, when I did the original view, which is, which was, um, not, uh, not trying to be rude, but trying to be very to the point, I reviewed his knife based on his footage, which said what the knife was for and what it could do, which is all bull crap, right? Just all trash, utter, utter rubbish. And, uh, uh, but it was probably one of my nicest videos production wise, because I had a mission because he said that this product would do certain things that it absolutely sucks at. And he made all these claims. So I took it step by step. It's more organized than my typical videos. I had a purpose. Um, and so I, I love that, um, actually, I because I feel like that's part of what I'm here to do. And like you said, you have an obligation to do the negative reviews. Well, when it's a product that needs a negative review, that has tons of false advertisement behind it, tons of popularity behind it that's based on lies, I feel like I have even more obligation. I enjoy that. But if it's just a product that sucks, then yeah, it, it sucks to do. Really, though, at the end of the day, my my least favorite video to do is um, training videos. And to me, it's the video that I have the most obligation to do I, uh, like I did Randall's adventure training, loved the class, but hated that I had to film during it. Uh, Editing it was brutal. And right now I have to edit, uh, and get up a video. My wife took fighting pistol at tactical response, and I've got to get that up. And it really sucks when you're working with other people and their schedules and everything else. It makes everything so much more difficult. And so it's like it's like this big homework assignment that's just constantly in the back of my head and man i hate that i really yeah. do yeah so I, know. I, I don't i can't blame you videos to get up they just are yeah no i i can't blame you um putting together sucky videos that you're not looking forward to is definitely a bear on top of the idea that you have all these other great ideas you want to get out there so uh yeah. Right. And well, and, and the other thing is, it's going to be so underappreciated because nobody wants to know how much I'm going to say they need to go get training because they don't want to get training. Anyways, right. they know that they need it and they're already trying to tell themselves that they don't. So they don't want to hear me say that they do. So it's going to be totally, you know, underappreciated. It'll get no views. But I, I need to get it up. So it's hard. <laughs> Well, good luck with that. I will change topics now. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So I guess, all right, your most popular video. So it's, this is two two-part two question. Um, yeah. On your channel, what is your most popular video? And I don't know if that would be indicative of most likes or most views, but whatever your definition of um, – your most popular video and then what is your most like hated or polarizing video that like separates the crowd and like half the people love it but half the people hate it and you're like this guy in the middle like navigating that around right well actually for my channel my most popular videos are always my most polarizing videos mm -hmm. uh no doubt i think uh i did a 1911 versus glock video just real quick, like off the cuff. And I think that it has probably as many views as every other video I've ever done combined or close to it yeah. and super polarizing. And, uh, and most people, the hard thing about that is most people don't even know what I'm talking about. Uh, then in the video, they don't even have the personal experience to understand what I'm saying. Uh, then there's 
Um, the MSK1 video that I mentioned, I'm really well known for that. Again, super polarizing because it has that strong fan base and people who believed the marketing and invested. And these are the kind of people that I'm trying to help before they make the investment. But the people who already have and have already spent the money, they don't want to hear that that it wasn't the best. And that's the hard part about it is because I don't want to give anybody buyer's remorse. But I do want to help the people that are about to buy. And you can't do one without the other. Um, and then um, recently I did a video about everybody's talking about a second civil war and politics. Uh, I did a video on that. That's just exploded. And again, I would say 95 percent. My my military background has uh, I did I was an infantryman. But I um, worked with intelligence on the ground. So I wasn't doing paperwork. I was getting information from S2 and figuring out what we were looking for on the ground and making sure that got to the commander and then getting information from the ground to S2. So I was one of the guys doing the same thing as everybody else. I just had an extra job. And I did work with PSYOPs. And then when I got out, I got a bachelor's degree in criminal justice, homeland security, specifically working counterterrorism. So I have this background to give insight on how the government will deal with insurrection, domestic terrorism, and all of this other stuff, and problems that I see with some of these other popular channels that have popped up that have said that they're analysts. And the problem is, though, that I'm giving this video based on firsthand experience. And so, like, 95% of the viewer base that has no experience is not even going to come close to understanding the message. And I'm also, uh, I'm also not the best at giving a friendly message. <laughs> so that's tough yeah. either. It's just, it's who I am. Like I try to do it different, but it's just, it's just not going to happen. I am who I am and I'm going to yeah. give the message cut and dry and people aren't going to like it. It is what it is. Yep. Nice. Yeah, I don't get too political on my channel and I'm not very political myself personally. I'm just not that and religious like two things. I just I'm not. I'm, you know, I'm an engineer. Um, I am a very factual based person, which helps me in my reviews. I make, you know, observations and, and deliver the facts the way I see them. And, um, you know, for me, uh, that's that's worked well, um, but it's also become polarizing. Um, one of my most polarizing videos, actually, I did an SE6 versus Schrade SEHF uh, 52M video. Um, oh, and oh. when I started um, with the Schrade, literally the tip broke off in the very first test. And like, I, I, I genuinely wanted to like the knife. I mean, there's a lot of great things about it. And it's hard because they're not exactly apples and apples, but. Right. I do. I look at knives in a size class and say, if it's in this size class, it's comparable. I mean, they're both 1095. They're hard use wilderness blades. They have a finger choil. They got a similar length cutting edge. They have similar length handles. They have micarta scales I'm like they're in a same blade class. And of course, you get half the world. That's the SE fan. That's like, well, of course, the SE is going to kick ass because it's an SE. And the other half is like, you fucking SE fanboys. Like, right. of course you're going to pick the SE to win. And I'm like, dude, let's just go back to the first step, which is the tip broke off the knife. Right. Like, right. It did not start well. <laughs> well, you know what's great is like, um, I do a lot of comparisons. And that's actually what I wanted to start doing. And I try to pick knives that are, again, in the same category like you did. I do Battle of the Budget Choppers and Battle of the behemoths and this and that and the other of knives in similar categories and people are like well that one's a convex grind and that one's a flat grind so you can't compare them they're apples and oranges and i'm like they're two ounces apart they're exactly the same size and they're designed for exactly the same use and people cross shop them so how are you going to tell me that they can't be compared like right what what yeah. like yeah. you know saying that you can't compare a kia and a honda that are in the exact same market because they're made in different countries. Like, I, can, can I compare anything? Like, what does this mean? I don't understand, you know? Man, yeah. it, there'll always be people when you're comparing things that will just make it as difficult as possible. So it's just the way it's gonna be. 
Yep, yep. And then um, for my most popular, and it's completely ridiculous, actually, it's, you know, 100 plus thousand views. It's just me literally taking the stuff out of my backpack. And the way I look at it, it's like, it's, imagine being in the middle of like the world's like largest soccer stadium times two. And you're standing in the middle with like all, everybody looking at you. And you're like, right. you, got, you got your microphone, you're like, I am taking my stuff out of my bag. You know, it's like, right. here, here are my socks. <laughs> right, right. Uh, awesome. You know, it's just, I it's. Any, I don't have any ridiculous videos that have gotten popular. That's, that's really epic, dude. I'm kind of jealous of that. Yeah, that's that's sweet. funny. Yeah, that's the one I think I really like sort of kickstarted my trends into, you know, into growing and, and getting my name out there. Lucky timing on something sometimes, you know, it's how you name it, what the topic is the time of year, what the analytics pick up and how it gets presented and who finds it. And I think every now and then you just get lucky. I mean, that's how viral videos work, you know? Yeah. 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 I had a video that went viral on Instagram of me chopping a tree down. Just with an ax out there, yeah. chopping on a tree. Views just went up a thousand every time I looked at them. You know what I mean? And every other video that I have of chopping anything gets two three hundred views it's weird man i yes yeah. i have no idea how it works dumb luck no, right it's kind of funny we're out here we're making videos we're making content but do we really know how things work does does anybody i don't know i don't freaking know yeah i don't i, like, I don't maybe. care to know i'll just do this have conversations and make content <laughs> right exactly well i think you'd drive yourself crazy if you did anything more the people who know how all of this works are probably the people who are funded by a company and the company is telling them exactly how it works yeah to get the most return on their in, on their investment you know what i mean that's probably who who knows how to make this work i don't know yeah yeah we'll let just them keep have it, it. and keep it grassroots i agree so um just a few more things and um you know i think this will uh, be a wrap so what are your goals for 2020 here right what are your goals? What do you want to do with your channel this year? Well, I want to get more training videos up and I really want to start pushing gun content. Um, if some people will make this political. It's not meant to be political. Um, AR-15s are cheaper now than they've ever been. They're in a lot of ways better than they've ever been. And it's not always going to be that way. So I want to review different AR-15s and stuff like that to help people get the most out of their money. And it's something that I really want to do and get right. And I want to motivate people to get training. I want to go out and do more training videos. And, uh, and so that's, that's a big thing that I'm going to try and push for 2020 is, is guns specifically. And, and a lot of budget stuff. And uh, because not everybody can go out and buy what's ideal but if we can in in my opinion if we can get them the best that they can get for the money because they're never going to spend more money anyways i think that's what we should be doing that's that's the way i look at it so hopefully i can do that more this year what about you nice um for me um and i i honestly don't even know what this means yet um what i know i want to try to achieve is to differentiate my channel from other channels i really i want to create content in a different way i want to find unique and innovative ways to try to do that um you know i think this type of thing is a step in the right direction where you know it's um, again it's now less about the review it's more about the person um you know getting to more of the people behind the scenes um and and who's you know involved in these these process um you know whether it's a company or you know product development um or whether it's a, a reviewer or a celebrity or i don't even know what but you know i want to focus more on people um i i want to create different types of content i have a lot of ideas um and i'm actually working on some things already so for my viewers um who may be watching this they've already probably signed off at uh four minutes and 46 seconds like most of my other view videos um, but but if, if they're hanging in there, um, I do have some some new types of content coming out in the next actually pr pretty soon. 
um, which I'm really pumped about. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do. Just create different types of content, um, not just focus on the reviews and find ways to continue to differentiate myself from, from the other channels in this particular genre. Hey, so you mentioned something, the average view duration. I think I figured something out about that. Um, I noticed that my average view duration was about four and a half minutes. However, I noticed as a rule, the shorter videos, which I would think more people would watch all of, get shorter duration, the longer videos get longer duration, the bulk of your real subscriber base is going to watch all or three quarters of your video. The bulk of random people that come are going to watch 30 seconds of your video. So it gives you an average view duration that's typically just under half the length of your video, regardless of how long it is, I think. And because it bothered me for a long time, it really did. And I had to, I had to figure out what was behind it. And I just saw a little bit of a pattern there and now I don't worry about it anymore as much. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't let it bother me too much either. I just make what I want to make. And that's the, the fun part about it. So well, I, um, that's, the thing. that's the most important thing. Yep. All right. So two very last things. Um, okay. You're putting a, Big effort forward now in weightlifting. This is yeah. is this uh, is this a, a, a new um, phase for you? I mean, it's obviously something you've always done, but is like your intensity uh, a new phase for you? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I'm com competition driven. I like to compete, and uh, I've started getting involved in strongman. Uh, uh, genre of exercises. I went and filmed some stuff at a, a local strongman meet recently. I got to film a couple world records, which was amazing and motivating. But I, uh, I, I'm dealing with a few injuries from the military and from after the military. Uh, actually, most of the mil injuries from after the military were caused by injuries in the military, and. I have to get in better shape to beat them because if I allow myself to get out of shape and I go have an adventure, I'm going to hurt myself. I just, um, I have to have strength to be healthy because of my injuries. So yeah, I've got a competition coming up right before this video. Um, I did an 18 inch pull of 495 pounds and went for, um, 685 you know, 585 and failed at that. But, uh, you know, I, now I'm in new injuries pop up. I just, I got bone spurs in my elbows, so I can't do any tricep, anything that involves triceps for probably at least a couple of weeks. Can't do anything heavy that uses triceps specifically for probably a couple of months. And my competition's July 4th. So, you know, it's, uh, I broke, uh, it was July 19th, a year and a half ago or something. I broke my leg and ankle in three places oh. and I got way out of shape. And after I got way out of shape, work was hard. Life was hard. Things just kept getting hurt. The other thing is I, I used that as a platform for more videos, uh, fitness for preppers, people who, who want to get into functional shape and kind of the combination of traditional cardio, the traditional weightlifting, uh, and how that's necessary for someone who's preparing for an emergency. So I'm trying to bring my journey of getting back into shape to, to use it to help other people. No, and that's wise. It's, you know, you hear a lot of people even talking about the fact that you know, what good is it to prepare for these situations and build a, a bug out bag and, you know, have all these things that you would need to sustain yourself. But if you're not even in physical shape to deal with it or to, you know, haul it to where you need to at a good clip over miles after miles, I mean, forget about it. So, um, yeah, I mean, fitness for me has always been something that's been um, very important. Obviously, the further I get in life, the, you know, the harder it is to maintain. Um, you know, I used to go to the gym avid, um, you know, I've never been about bulk. I've always been about uh, lean body mass and just, you know, general cut. Um, but, um, you know, it's something that's kind of fallen by the wayside. Um, so I use my outdoors experiences as my sort of outdoor gym right now. And 
it's hard in the winter time. I, I, you know, I'm feeling it a little bit at this time, but, um, you know, I know as soon as the spring pops around, I'll, I'll get back out there and I'll get back in, in, you know, tip top shape for somebody who's, uh, just turned 40. Absolutely. And that's, and that's saying a lot. And, um, yeah, you're, you're talking, uh, one thing that's hard for me is I like doing gear reviews. I know that people are going to watch my reviews and buy the product. If I do a good review on a product, people are going to watch it and they're going to buy something. They're going to, they're going to buy it. And I want people to understand it's fun buying gear, but, um, but at the end of the day, it's more important to use gear. And so not that I want to nag people, but I, you know, that's where all the training and everything else comes in is I want to help people to make wise purchases, but if they're buying gear because they think that they need it, I want them to also realize that their mind and their skill set is more important than their gear at the same time. I don't want to just be the guy that's like, buy, 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 buy. And if I tell someone to buy something, if I tell someone something's good, that reflects directly on me and who I am. So if I lie to them, then I'm worthless as a channel and as a person in my opinion and is worthless. So I, I feel like it's an obligation to look directly at what you were just saying, you know, and the, by, by doing all of this prepping, but being so out of shape that, you know, you can't get up your stairs. So that's, that's right. a problem. And right. so that's where the training and the fitness comes in because I want to talk about the gear that I really like, but also through my videos, I want to show that that's not the whole story. And a lot of people would think when I started this, that I was in good shape. I know from my past experiences in emergency situations that where I'm at now is not in good shape. And so, um, you know, I, I need to lead by example. Uh, no, great example, man. And, um, you know, glad to hear that you're paying attention to it, that you're moving forward methodically. Uh, you got a goal in mind, um, you know, big competition coming up, but in the meantime, you're going to kind of pay attention to your body, feel it telling you, telling you a story, telling you the warning signs, things that you need to pay attention to so that you move you now carefully and, and methodically as you heal and get stronger. And um, that's great, man. So I wish you all the luck in your competition. Hopefully you get yourself there and everything works out very well. Um, oh, but, oh. Uh, you know, I think um, you're on the right track. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for doing the video. I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to our upcoming videos. We're gonna have a lot of fun. I'm glad you brought that up. So uh, again, we have a couple more coming. Um, and, uh, you know, I think these next two definitely are, um, you know, moving in the right direction. If people want to hear about gear and talk about gear, well, don't worry. Um, you know, gear is coming. And um, you know what, man, I think that'll be uh, the start of something. So, uh, Hey, thanks again. Um, you know, I'm glad you reached out. Uh, you know, I saw a few of your, um, you know, likes and comments on uh, Instagram and figured, what the hell, let's let's get something going. So it's good shit, dude. Thank you. Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate you. We'll talk soon. Yeah. You too. Take care.